So it turns out that you lot are as animal obsessed as I am. Um, at least the people that have commented saying they want a, an animal tour. Well, can't be bothered to go outside and actually do a complete tour, but I'll go out the front door and yell at Bracken Vale to see if they'll come and say hello. They are livestock guardian dogs. Um, if you're wondering why I've got guard dogs, it's to guard the chickens and all that stuff. We could do a chicken tour sometimes. Chickens are kind of fun. They also torment me, the chickens. Like, they just run around and follow me the whole time. And But it's kind of cute, but sometimes it gets a little bit too much, and a little bit intimidating. But anyway, so I can't believe I just said I'm intimidated by chickens. But chickens used to be dinosaurs, so... They could, you know, imagine if they were big. That would be really scary being followed around by those things. Anyway, so we'll go out and say hi to Breck and Vale. Come on, guys. This is Vale, who we've already met. And this guy here is Breck. He's a big guy. He's only... Breck is only 10 months old, aren't you, big lad? Yeah, and he's so adorable, and he's a big love bug sometimes, just, well, to most people, aren't you, buddy? Sometimes not to people he doesn't know that well. Sometimes he can be a bit growly and barky, but that's his job, because he's a guard dog, aren't you, big lad? Yeah, 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 and he's just so gorgeous. Hi, Vale, I know, you're there too, but you've been on YouTube, you've been on YouTube Vale, you have. Jack hasn't yet. Okay, he goes off again to do his jobs. So, this is funny as well. This is what happens every time if I've been outside. <laughs> <laughs> I have a little audience <laughs> waiting for me. Okay, so we're back inside now, and this is a pretty long email from Miranda. So, let's see what she has to say. Hello, Tabitha. I've been struggling with something in my current recovery that I'd hopefully like to get your advice on. I've been doing great in recovery after truly committing to weight gain and honestly eating anything and everything. If I keep wincing, it's because Stinky's biting my fingers. Miranda, it's nothing to do with your email, okay? Um, stinky. It's been fantastic recently because I feel crazily empowered like I can pretty much take on the world. A few times though, I've run into an issue regards to doing social things. Recently, I've been eating a lot whenever I'm at home and simply because I have access to larger amounts of my favourite foods that I previously restricted. Once I start eating, of course, I just want to keep going. So I'll often um, stand in the kitchen and eat and eat until either all the food is gone or my dog begs me to take him out or something else just requires my attention. The problem I've been having has occurred on the days when my boyfriend is also with me and we both have a day off together to hang out and do whatever we want. He's been extremely supportive of this process, but I've noticed that whenever he wants to go out and explore or do something different, I find that I really have no desire to do anything because I'd rather just eat and eat. Even when he invites me to go out for a walk or a hike, these are things I love doing before my eating disorder and during it too. I find that nothing sounds more appealing than just staying inside and eating and I'm not interested in any event that doesn't involve food. This makes me quite sad because I know there's more to life than food and I obviously want to spend time with my boyfriend and not isolate myself. Do you think it is just a phase of my recovery? Will I eventually get back to enjoying doing active and social things once I am weight restored further into recovery? Should I be forcing myself to move away from the food sometimes in order to do other things? Or should I focus more on fully responding to mental hunger and engaging in these binges as much as I can? Additionally, my boyfriend has been present during many binges that I've had and sometimes notices me struggling on the off days where the eating disorder voice sneaks into my head and sends a pang of guilt while I'm eating. When he notices the struggling, he usually suggests that I stop so that I don't feel bad about what I ate now or later. I've explained to him that the reason I am not going to stop is because I'm still mentally very hungry and I just must continue in order for the recovery process to work. This is still a difficult concept for him to grasp, I think, but also makes me wonder about the future. Once recovered, will I know when to stop? Will it be something that I have actively have to actively work at? Or will mind and body just communicate effectively? And will I stop eating after I'm satisfied without having to make a conscious effort to do so? What was your experience with this, Miranda? Okay, Miranda, so, right. The first thing that we well, I was asked in that thing is about, um, should you be worried that um, 
you don't really feel like doing much other than eating right now. So let's have a look at this from a more biological perspective. Let's have a look at it from your, your body's point of view. Your body has been through a famine and now it seems, thank God, the famine is over and finally there's food around. And so from your body's point of view, it's still in energy deficit. And let's all remember that energy deficit can be true even if your weight has come up and even if you are supposedly at a normal weight and even if you're actually supposedly at a higher than normal weight, you can still be in energy deficit. So your body is in energy deficit and it's asking for huge amounts of food to help it amend that energy deficit. Now, as far as your body is concerned, there, there's like this hierarchy in terms of what is important to it. And right at the base level, very important, food, water, oxygen. Your body can't live without any, all of those things. And if one of those things is in deficit, your body's going to kind of freak out about it. And so because you're in energy deficit, your body's just like, <laughs> social, whatever. Why would I go out when there's food here? Duh. Like, I have to eat. I have to get out of energy deficit. That's your body's number one mission. When you are no longer in energy deficit, your body's going to like, or your brain at least, is going to sort of move up a gear. It doesn't have to be focusing on the baseline stuff. And it's going to go like, oh, I can move up again now. And social, social things are, are up a gear. That's the sort of thing that your brain's going to want to engage in after food, water, and oxygen are met. And you can play around with this if you hold your breath. Um, you'll notice that the longer you hold your breath, the um, less you can think about anything other than, I need to breathe. <laughs> Stinky. Um, and so holding... Yeah, Food is in deficit, so your body's focusing on food. And I think that's really intelligent of it. And all of our bodies do it. And I understand that it can be a bit concerning. And I'm like thinking, just, is this going to go on forever? Am I ever going to be actually interested in other things? Yeah, you will. Of course you will. When you're out of energy deficit, when you're nutritionally rehabilitated enough, don't push it. Because repair takes a long time. Nutritional rehabilitation takes a long time. Don't judge it either is what it is but what I found was that quite naturally it was just like I started to get more interested in other things other than the kitchen and your second question there was um God, I can't remember the second question uh I think it was to do with the binges will the binges naturally stop oh yeah so will will you be satisfied I guess in the more normal amount of food Let's go back to biology again. Your body knows it's in energy deficit. And because it's in energy deficit, it knows that the way to amend that is to eat really large amounts of food, which is exactly what it's asking you to do. Now, when your body is no longer in energy deficit, it doesn't need to do that. It doesn't have any, you know, that switch is kind of like off. It then can be satisfied on more regular amounts of food. I dislike saying normal amounts of food because, you know, if you look on what a normal amount of food is supposed to be, it's very little. So, arguably, I still eat much bigger than normal amounts of food, but that's only because what's considered normal is a diet. So, anyway, the binges will stop when your body comes out of energy deficit and you Here's the other important thing to remember. You can't tell when your body's out of energy deficit by looking at it. I know I keep saying this, that you can be in energy deficit at any size. And that's because you don't know what's going on inside and in here. You don't know what your body's doing. Like, it could be flipping, mending all some shit today that you don't know about. So, the size of your body, your weight, is to do with how much fat you've got stored. Your energy balance is to do with that, yes, but it's also to do with the amount of stuff that your body's got going on that day. And I don't mean about moving, I just mean about stuff that it takes to run itself. And it does, our bodies do all of these things internally that we don't even know shit about. So 
your body's going to be repairing itself for a long time and you can't see that and it's going to need more food in order to do that so try not to judge try and enjoy it it sounds actually like you are doing really fabulously oh and with your boyfriend um i guess you can try and help him understand and you can just talk to him and say you know i do need to eat a lot of food and when you tell me that maybe i should stop eating so i don't feel bad later it makes me feel like i should feel bad for eating all this food hopefully you can understand that best of luck <laughs>